My name is Samantha Mirabal. I'm going to quick go over how to digitize files to be able to create patches. I'm not going to cover a whole lot of technique. There's a lot of resources out there and materials that you can try. Um, here's just a list of a few different YouTubes. Um, Erich Campbell did a really good um, discussion on the different ways to do patches. There's a lot of different systems you can buy out on the Melco service site, if you click on the FAQ down at the bottom here, or if you search at the top, search for custom patches, there's an entire document out here. And this is what that looks like on giving you materials, hooping um, settings, all kinds of stuff. Different way. This is one technique that you can use to make patches. It works nicely. All right. So with that, let's pop over to Design Shop, maybe. All right, and let's create a basic circle patch. So we'll do, I'm going to first off hold this down and come over to the vector. I don't have to do this. I just like it to visualize the patch better. So that's going to give me a vector fill input method. I'm going to also click on the circle, automatic circle input. And I click two points, hold my shift key down and drag my mouse. And that locks it to a perfect circle. And I'm going to go ahead and center that up. And then down here, I want it to be a three inch circle. So to make it a three inch circle, I selected it. And then down here, I typed in three and hit enter. So now I have a three inch vector circle. This isn't something that's going to sew. It's just there for me to visualize. So I'll show a quicker way to do this if you've got Pro Plus, but we'll start with the basics. So to create your patch, generally you need a placement stitch, which is a running stitch. So to create that, I'm going to select my circle. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to click on select walk input method, which is this first icon. And I'm going to left click on that. So if I turn off my vector, you'll now see I have a walk normal for my circle. That's the placement to lay either my die cut fabric or a large piece of fabric, however you want to do it. Okay. So if you're going to lay, um, lay fabric down, run this, or run this, and then put a pre-cut shape in. It's all the same difference. All right, so you've got a walk input method. Your next step would then be usually a zigzag to hold it down. Well, to create a zigzag, again, I'm going to, you can either select the vector or the walk input. Here, you hold the shift key down. Now I'm going to click on the single line center, which is the second icon down on the right. That creates a satin stitch. Well, I don't. We don't need it that that dense. So let's increase our density to 17, and then the width. We want to get good coverage. Make sure it's got the fabric and it's overlapping and getting all the furs, um, the little fluffy pieces, and capturing it. So we'll do a zigzag of about a width of 25. All right. I'm going to give that a different color. So we have a walk. We have this, we don't need the underlay on that. Oh, here we go. All right, so I have a walk and then I have a zigzag. Well, at this point, if I want to decorate it, I'd you know, do whatever design work I want. That will be my next color changes. After that is all done, now I need a satin stitch. Well, let's copy this one and let's paste it. Give it another color change. Well, that's currently just a pretty wide, so let's lower this down to a 3.7 and then increase our satin edge to a 40 point. And now we have a placement stitch, a zigzag, and our satin stitch to give it that nice clean look around the edge. So we've got a basic circle patch. All right, so we built that by scratch. Well, you can also use the applique tool Okay. Oh, wait, before I move on to that, if you're going to sew fabric down um, and then cut it in place, sometimes it's nice. I just copied, did a control C, control V to have two placement stitches. The first one to give you locations if you're going to fussy cut fabric around there. So you'd run your first circle, you'd put an applique stop on your machine, you'd grab a large piece of fabric, you'd lay it over it. You'd run your second color, that sews it down, you'd hit another applique stop, you'd trim the fabric away, your zigzag, any decoration, and your border. 
Okay, you can also use this walk normal stitch. So if I copy that, again, I did a control C, paste it into a new file. Now I can do file save as and save it as an SVG or an EPS or one of those and save it to be able to open it with a cutter like a silhouette or an eye line or a BN20, the Roland <coughs> cutter. So you can use any of those to cut your circles out ahead of time. And so that is like a die cut operation. All right, well, let's do it one other way. So I still have my vector circle. This time I'm just gonna create an applique from this. All right, so if you've got the higher levels of design shop, you have this button here, which is um, change element from one type of another. Okay, so I select my circle. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select applique and I'm going to say add. So you'll see I have my applique all done. Okay, I'm going to change the background color because I don't like that green. All right, now if you look at it though, the applique tool, my default has it set where most of my satin stitch is on the fabric, very little is off of it. So if we go into the properties, you can see where that's being driven from. It's this outside inside ratio here. If I change that to a 60 40 type split on both of these, you'll notice more is hanging on the outside of the fabric. So if you're trimming the fabric in place, um, this setup generally works a little bit better if you're using a die cut or pre-cut shapes. You can afford to get closer to the edge because um, it'll be a more accurately, accurately cut shape for you. Now, when you're dealing with this applique, you can also come into the properties here and say enab enable color change at tack down. That just gives you three color changes. One is the running stitch. <coughs> this is your zigzag and that's your satin stitch. Okay, so it, it lets you have the option to put a hold or an applique after your zigzag if you want to be able to trim up any loose threads. All right, now from there, make sure you review all your properties, make sure they make sense. Ones I'd suggest looking at would be the density on the top stitch, add at least a center walk underlay to your top stitch, make sure you have knots on. And I like to add at least one point of pull offset <coughs> to everything I do. Okay, now from here you can go File, Save Applique Outline. Okay, and that will allow you to save off, again, your SVG or DXF file that you can then open with a cutter. Well, what, let's say you have a random design here. So this is just one of the designs that comes with the software or I found in the software folder. Now, oops, let's delete that. All right, now it's one of the designs that's in the software folder. Before I did record this, um, I did draw in a vector just to make life a little bit easier. So I drew in that shape, that's the fabric. So let's say we wanna take this design, which is pretty large, 11 wide by eight tall, and we wanna turn it into a patch to sew on jackets or something, okay? Well, how it runs currently, would you notice it just goes straight into the decoration, okay? So it's not actually sewing down any fabric first. So we need to add some steps to be able to put the fabric down, hold it in place, then we do our decoration on our borders. So I drew the vector, and I just did that using the vector fill and, you know, just traced around my shape, left click, right click, until I got around it. All right, so I have my vector. I'm going to select that. Again, I'm going to hold my shift key and click on the walk input method. That created for me, I'll turn all this off, just a walk. So that's my placement stitch for the fabric. So I'm going to move that to step one. Well, the next thing I need is a zigzag. So again, I can click on the vector or the walk, hold my shift key down, and click on the single line center. Change that to a density of 17. Increase the width, because 20 is too narrow to get a good hold. Something bigger. Okay, so now I've got a zigzag. So now the fabric's there. Now I can go do all the decoration and then the final border. Wraps it up and now I have a patch. 
or I have it set up where I can run it as a patch. I do need to make sure I have a multiple color changes there. And if I want to fussy cut fabrics, I can even add multiple color changes for that walk normal. So I've got two walk normals and then uh, my zigzag stitch. <coughs> if I want to die cut this, I can copy that walk normal, paste it into a new file, file save as. and then go save it as an SVG or an EPS um, so that, that I can go open it in the cut software and be able to create the file to pre-cut my fabric. All right. So that is different ways to set up your files to create from you know any design like this that you want to turn into a patch. Create your own borders like we did here. So create your own um, patches and to remember there's lots of ways to do it you can just hoop fabric and go for it grab yourself a heat knife and cut it after you know cut and burn afterwards um, as long as it's synthetic materials that works really well you can do it as if it were an applique on a water soluble stabilizer or a cleat some sort of plastic that you can poke the patch out of when it's completed so there's a lot of different techniques that you can find everyone has an opinion on what works perfect um, you know try a few things see what you like and that's all i had hope this was helpful